Reigns is such a dick. Deception, released in 1946 and is directed by Irving Rapper, who's behind such films like Now Voyager, The Corn is Green, and Another Man's Poison. And this film stars the legendary Betty Davis, Paul Henry, and Claude Rains. Carl Novak is an esteemed cello player, and after one of his concerts, he is greeted by one of his long-lost loves, Christine. They reignite their love for each other and eventually get married. But on their wedding day, Christine is greeted by one of her long-lost loves, Alexander Hellenius, who is an esteemed composer and conductor. But you can tell there's some jealousy behind the eyes of Hellenius, to the point where you figure he probably fell in love with Christine at one point. And to test their relationship and their nerve, Hellenius gives Carl a cello solo in his neck. Next opus. And I am very excited to be discussing this movie today because this movie came as a recommendation from someone who is very near and dear to my heart. You would say that I kind of live with her. She is my wife, Tammy Snyder Knutsa. She is the love of my life and she has her master's in music. When she was getting that degree, she took a film scores study class. And in there, they dissected the score of this film. And it's one of her favorite scores. It's one of her favorite films. So obviously it was going to be her recommendation for me. But that's a little difficult for me, at least to speak about the score of the film, which is what this film is known for because I'm kind of a layman when it comes to music. I can read it, I can play it, I can sing it, but when it comes to like developing and creating it, I'm just, uh, no, that doesn't work for me. So I figure, why not? She lives here. Let's have her talk about it with me. Tammy, come on over. Hello, Tammy. How are you? Oh, I'm peachy. How are you? I'm, I'm doing quite well. <laughs> All is... right, let's start this with, uh, I'm really awkward. And mm -hmm. cameras are really weird for me. I do live performances. I don't do camera stuff. So this is going to be weird. Okay. All right. This is your first interview on YouTube, correct? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. We'll say hi to all 319 subscribers. Hello, 319 subscribers, many of which are probably my friends. Which I appreciate. <laughs> I was going to say, is this is awkward for you? Is it is for me? <laughs> It's a little weird. It's like, oh, there's somebody here. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is very strange because I have someone here. Usually I'm nice and framed inside here. But, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be outtakes of me just doing weird stuff at you. <laughs> this is going to be like an hour long. <laughs> so this is the person that puts up with this hobby of mine. Yep. Um, she's encouraged and supported it. Sometimes. Even though I make no money majority of the time. That's okay. Doesn't matter. If it makes you happy, then who cares? Exactly. So Deception, you yeah. like this movie a lot. I do like this movie a lot. Why? This movie is really interesting because it incorporates basically your classic love triangle sort of thing, which meh, I don't really give a shit about that. Oh. But it also incorporates really interesting usages of music that is well known like mozart bach mm -hmm. things like that but then it also incorporates a score that was designed specifically for this film by eric korngold and i think it's really interesting how music is used throughout this film and his middle name is wolfgang correct i don't recall I, well I, I saw it on wikipedia i saw his middle eric, name is wolf wolfgang eric korngold wolfgang Corn gold. Well, I mean, I guess he's channeling his Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Exactly. And like his middle name is Wolfgang. Of course, he's a composer. How could he not be? Sure. So what is it about the music that you really like enjoy? I think it's interesting to find a film that actually incorporates live performances within the film. Now, it's not necessarily that the actors in those roles are playing the instruments sure. at hand. There are some scenes in which they do. Um, Betty Davis actually in the piano scene where she plays the Appassionata by Mozart, she plays parts of it. She can't play the whole thing. She's not a virtuosic pianist. But, but she but she is a, a pianist. She has uh -huh. basic skills. She, she has, has a... some basic skills where mm -hmm. she could kind of fudge it well. Okay. I enjoy how the entire film, though, it just brings in classical music. It's something that right. is so surrounded by that music. You can find a classic love triangle anywhere. Any film. Oh, yeah. But I mean, you get someone like Claude Rains, who, if you have not watched older films that star Claude Rains, yes. you are missing something very significant in your movie viewing. <laughs> he is a fantastic supporting actor. He's not really a lead in anything, but he's just like you're the epitome of what a supporting actor is, I think. I, w I 
would agree with that. He yeah. he's very good at playing off of others. He mm -hmm. he's a really good villain. That's what I find. A lot of times he's, he's a very good villain. Very very uh very villain esque. Um, he's kind even, of sassy. He's if he he well I said it in the intro here. He's a dick in this movie. He is a hardcore <laughs> dick in this movie. But though on the flip side of that. The other dude, Carol, is also a hardcore dick. Yes. Let's is it, is be it, honest here. His name is Carol? Yeah. Okay. I, I was think it's Carol. I huh? was saying Carl. <laughs> <laughs> really said it's Carol. Okay. It's a... Whoops. Sorry, K -A -R -E -L. everyone. K-A-R-E-L. K, yes. Carol. All right. I was like, Carl? 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 <laughs> Carl! <laughs> Carl! <laughs> the famous cellist. Carl. Well, that, um, yeah. But yeah, but Claude Rains, uh, I, I think the first time I saw him was either in Casablanca or in um, Mr. Smith Going to Washington, which mm -hmm. I think is, God, that is a fantastic classic movie. I need to watch that again. Mm -hmm. But he's, I think he's stellar in this in this movie as the, he's he's basically the guy in Whiplash, J.K. Simmons in Whiplash, before Whiplash happened, I think. Whiplash? Whiplash. Did whiplash I say Whiplash? Happened. Well, when I think Claude Rains, I think of Whiplash. So. Well, the thing that's interesting about this, I don't know if, You've explained this already or not. And I haven't explained anything. Okay, so, so essentially with the plot, what's oh, happening... Oh, I, I explained that. Oh. Kind of. I didn't explain anything. Well, I, did, I didn't explain it, I just kind of went <laughs> Okay, so, so love triangle. Betty Davis mm -hmm. is essentially being a little tiny bit of a douchebag in this yes. sort of idea. She's did, lying to both of them. I didn't cover that, yep. She's lying to both of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, things happen. She assumed that Carol had died in the war, so it makes yep. sense as to why she would move on, and she moved on to Hellenius. Which I had to ask you about after I saw this movie for, for this channel. Mm -hmm. I didn't really get what was happening. I know that she was being deceptive. Ah. <laughs> I, I totally missed out on the, the war that... Carell was in and, and um apparently and her, he's now a character in the Superman franchise. Carell. Carell. My son my son Carell will never leave Krypton. Is that what he does? Does he pull open his he chest does. so you can see his chest? If hair? he well if he could he would, but he definitely does like this in the movie. Like, okay. Well, my, my wife Laura and I will not leave Krypton. Krypton? Yes. Okay. He he didn't bother to learn Marlon Brando didn't learn any of his lines back then. He was just like doing this for the paycheck. Sweet. The interesting thing about this film, too, that you want to keep in mind is the fact that it is a melodrama. You cannot oh, go yeah. into this film thinking like, oh, this is how acting is supposed to be. Yeah. One yeah. moment you have Betty Davis who's like, oh, yes, look. <laughs> and, and then, and then uh, uh, Carell, who I, I keep forgetting. Carol! <laughs> Carol. His name is Carol. Carol! Okay. Carol. Um, played by uh, Paul, Hen is it Henry? I pronounce it as Henry. And ride, I don't. I, I don't think, fucking know, and I don't care. Well, it's German, so we have the oh, I read. after the. Be ride. Be ride. Uh huh. Paul Henride. Sorry, I <laughs> fucked up this entire beginning of this of this video, but that's okay. I don't know language. Um, words are hard. Words are very difficult for me. But yeah, there are times where he just like he has bipolar disease or something where he's like all madly in love with Betty Davis and then all of a sudden he's like no you lied to me tell me why ah but I love you again my head hurts I did you just yelled in my face oh that's right I'm sorry you yelled in my face a lot <laughs> usually I'm yelling at the camera and I don't hear anything back from from the camera Paul Henright he he doesn't play the cello in this movie. The first time I saw it, I thought he was. Mm -hmm. um, and then you <laughs> pointed out while this movie was was playing, like, oh no, he doesn't play it. I'm like, oh really? That's not, hmm. That kind of killed his performance for me. I thought he was like an actual cellist doing it. And I was like, that's very impressive. No, if you'd like a demonstration of how it was actually being done. <laughs> oh God. Hold tight here, camera world. Okay. okay. That's the lighting adjusts. Yep. Boy, your armpits are sweaty. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Be your worst video ever. It's gonna, no, it's gonna be great. It's gonna get a lot of views. A lot of views. Um, but after you pointed that out, and then when you get when we get to the big concert scene and he's playing his solo, it's actually quite obvious that those shoulders are not where they should be. They're a little bit farther out and they're sunken in a little bit. But apparently his arms were were tied behind his back, so yeah. he couldn't move it at all. And then an actual was it one or was it two? Cellist players behind him. Playing. I can't recall if it was one or two, okay. but I, def... I, I I think it was just one because they had to have matching right. hands. Right. I guess that makes sense. And I mean, I feel like it'd be hard to coordinate 
two people. Yeah. But, but I mean, Warner Brothers, they, uh, just reading up on the history of this movie, they spent a lot of money on this movie and it didn't, it was well received, it was uh, well criticized and, and everything, but it didn't make a lot of money. In fact, it lost money and it was known as one of the first movies, well, the first movie that Betty Davis, uh, for at least for Warner Brothers at least, lost money for them, which is mm -hmm. very rare for Betty Davis. She's one of the most famous actresses of all time. A couple of years after this, she ended up doing All About Eve, which is probably the most iconic role that she's ever done. Well, the interesting thing about this too, if I recall right, is that the three leads in this movie have done other films together. They did oh, one, yeah. I believe, that preceded this one that was really well received, and uh, then they thought that this one, their chemistry would yeah. align well, and it did, but it wasn't. Yeah, I, well, I know I know that Betty Davis and Claude Rains, they, they at least did several other ones. I don't know about the... Uh... No, I'm fairly certain that uh, Henry did too. He did too? Okay. I'm fairly certain there was yeah. one that they did prior to this. I can't recall what it's what it was though. Yeah, and I know, and I know the director worked a lot with uh, with Betty Davis as well too. So the reason why you came across this movie was because you have your master's in music mm -hmm. and you took a film scores class. A film music class. Film yeah. music class. Okay, and then yeah. this one was like how many movies did you like dissect that semester? Oh gosh, I can't remember how many it was. I feel like it was four or five. Okay. But this was one that I kind of gravitated toward mainly just because of that corn gold cello concerto which is so beautiful mm -hmm. oh my gosh cello is by far my favorite it's one of mine as yeah. well it's one of mine as well but it's the piece itself you can hear based on what again the score essentially it's so robust and there's so many different mm -hmm. emotions and feelings in it and you can sense Helenius is not only the conductor but he's the composer of the right. piece too and you you can feel that sort of tension within that piece. He exclusively chose Carol to play the piece, and we don't know if it was because he was looking to sabotage him, mm -hmm. what it was, but there was clearly within uh, yeah. that piece of music a lot of that there, raw emotion that was coming from that triangle. Because he, yeah, because he loves, uh, he loved Christine, loved Betty Davis's character, and, mm -hmm. uh, but he, he has that line in the movie, I have no devotion to you or to or to him I have devotion to the music mm -hmm. and that's something that an artist is supposed to do it's not to do it's not to appease critics it's not to appease fans it's not to appease uh, really like your spouse or anyone that you're mm -hmm. in love with you're supposed to do it for yourself art is an extension of you and if you're not if the if the final product is not honest to you then it's just it's all wrong I wouldn't go as far as saying it's all wrong I mean, it's not all. It's not it's all not wrong motivated. to you, right? It may not feel completely motivated. Yeah, and that's why that's why I use the comparison with this movie to to the more recent one, Whiplash, because they kind of do basically the same thing. We don't see, and that's one of sort of like the only thing that I had a problem with this movie. I wanted to see more of the rehearsal mm -hmm. because we have that scene where Claude Rains, uh, to Paul Henride, he is. Uh, He's all nervous. He wants to perform this. He wants to rehearse this. And mm -hmm. Claude Rains is really just toying with him. Like, no, 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 no. We're going to have a nice long dinner so that this that the nerves can build up in you um, to the point where you know you, there's there's no filter. There's just just bare person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, there's no mask that you're putting on. A very manipulative sort of film. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, it's called deception. <laughs> That was the line, my favorite line, and I want to use it when, when I'm teaching this. When it's art, I have no devotion to you or to appeasing anyone but myself because this is my art. And if it's not true to me, then I, you know, what's the point of even doing it? I also think, too, when it comes to music, you have to be true to the composer, too. And that's, sure. um, that's a really tricky part of it as well. In this particular film the conductor and the composer are the same person mm -hmm. and who happens to be somebody who strongly, strongly dislikes the mm -hmm. person who is playing the piece, who is premiering yep. this piece. So there's a lot of, a lot of baggage yeah. that goes with this yeah. too. But he's not, he's not, um, he's not like your stereotypical, like, like dictator-ish. He doesn't, doesn't really yell at you. He oh, no, doesn't. He, does, he just. He doesn't like physically harm you in any way. Mm -hmm. He he's condescending. Oh yeah. When he's when he's rehearsing, he's pretentious. Mm -hmm. He just has this light way about him. 
Oh, you played that wrong, dumbass. That kind of <laughs> that kind of thing. It doesn't yell at you. It's just that light, light vocal condescend condescension. I feel like those are the the conductors and the leaders who terrify the shit out of you too. The ones right. that are like, oh no, no. No, not the ones that yell at you, because if they yell at you, you're just like, eh, you just middle fingers down. in the air, whatever. Yeah, like, okay, Peace fuck out. you, you're a dick, yeah. But the ones that make you feel like you have actually made a grave error in mm -hmm. judgment are the ones that and, you're like, oh. And, and just with a, like, just, with just a look of... Yeah, yeah. Disappointment. Heck, even, because <laughs> when, Betty, when he, Betty Davis, she's playing her solo at their wedding reception, and he's drinking wine, and he's just so upset and frustrated because he's she's not playing it right or, or whatever, and he's so frustrating at the whole situation, too, that he just breaks the glass. So. I don't think it had anything to do with her playing it correctly. Yeah. It had everything to do with the fact that she's playing the Cassianata, which is something that I'm assuming the two of them had worked on together oh, okay, okay. and she's yeah. playing it for yeah. her her wedding sort of to this other person to this other person that he is listening to that piece to hear yeah, yeah i would i would be pissed off too if i was yeah. invited to someone else's wedding like like say if you got married to someone else and you were like hey caleb come over and do a movie review for us because <laughs> <laughs> that's the only that's thing that's real that's realistic the only thing i'm good at <laughs> So this guy, so. as I'm sure you can tell, is a great actor, too, and he has great comedic timing, so don't oh. let him be like that. <laughs> oh, stop! Yeah, be yeah. Oh, goodness! Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. Well, is there anything else that you wanted to mention about Deception? I mean, it's is it your favorite film? No, it is not my favorite film. What's your favorite film? My favorite film is Twelve Angry Men. Twelve Angry Men, mm -hmm. which I cover like 15 episodes uh -huh. ago. I was think I was thinking. Okay, I was thinking. He was thinking. I was thinking. Thinking. Why do you like that movie so much? Why do I like Twelve Angry Men? Yeah, I because I had the uh, I had the intention I think of, of bringing you on that episode, but I think just with timing it didn't work out. But um, yeah, why why is that your favorite movie? I love Twelve Angry Men because you have essentially what is it maybe three areas of setting in the entire film. There's the courtroom itself. There's outside of the courtroom, and then there's the actual jurors' quarters. And then the, I guess the bathroom and the. But court, still part of the, juror the jurors' quarters, quarters though. Yeah. It's still in one yeah. space essentially. Mm -hmm. You put that many people in that small of a space, and you mm -hmm. can tell that clearly they were um, working in that space as well to make it uncomfortable to kind of. Mm -hmm get sure. those different emotions and feelings out there too um it's really powerful and so simple yeah it's so simple and it's so um so relative <laughs> to today the movie came out oh, in relative. the 50s yes what did i say relative oh well it's relative too. welcome to our relationship it's all I'm relative an asshole. <laughs> it's all relative <laughs> einstein had it right i like that film it's yes. good 10 um, out of 10 would, would you would recommend well how many blu-rays i give it five blu-rays five blu-rays five blu-rays okay uh, so Five mammogram machines. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's for something that's so bad it's amazing. Like The Room, where it's absolutely terrible, but well, fine. you have to go back and, and just keep watching it. I got the results of the test back. I definitely have breast cancer. Terribly amazing. Ew. So Deception, where would Deception fit on like your ranking of movies? So 12 of your men's up top. Where would deception be? Probably somewhere in the middle. It's so not like something around five or six ish. Ah, uh, probably lower than that. To be oh, honest, really? it's not, or higher than that rather. Um, it's not like it's my favorite film in the world or anything like that. I think that the use of music in the film is really interesting, and I really, really love the set in that film. Oh yeah, that's oh. we did. We haven't talked about the set. You like the first time it came up, it was that's you kept saying, "Oh my god, I love this set." So essentially. Um, Christine's apartment is mm -hmm. this enormous studio apartment, and it's just full of these thing is massive glass windows. <laughs> yeah, like, the entire all living the way room. Up. Yeah, and it's and it's an angled one yeah. too, so it goes up and then it goes at like a forty-five degree angle. It looks like a fishbowl to me in a way. Like it, it reminds yep. me of. I think it's an intentional choice of space too, mm -hmm. because it allows you to look in on all of the stuff that's going on mm -hmm. and a lot of times the emotions that are happening within the apartment will yeah. be reflected outdoors yeah. so in some of the really tumultuous scenes you see like rain pouring down the windows mm -hmm. you see um darkness 
in the morning when she first, after she first sees Carol again, it's like mm -hmm. super sunny. And then Helenius goes on the phone. You can see it start to get a little bit darker. Mm -hmm. There's just a lot of really interesting uses of yeah, that, that setting in the film. Set is gorgeous. I like. I want that apartment. It's really, really Honey, nice. Honey, we can't afford it. No, <laughs> no, we can't. But we're fine. We're fine. So, how many Blu-rays would you give this this movie? I'd give it four Blu-rays. Yeah, that's where I'm going to. I'm going to give yeah. Deception four out of five Blu-rays. It's good. It's good. It's good. Definitely a good watch. I I guarantee 319 of you, you have not seen this movie. I don't think anyone has seen this movie. No. Yeah. Because when you first uh, were talking about it after your, your class, you were like, oh, I, I want to watch Deception and trying to find this film for you because I want to get it for you as a surprise just finding it like where the heck is this thing or which year was this did so. you find it on amazon uh was uh, is it amazon or ebay yeah. half half dot com when that thing existed so does it not exist anymore nope not that not that i see i see type i type in half dot com and nothing i Gone. feel old i know <laughs> That's how we bought all of our college textbooks. College textbooks. Half.com, come back. Sponsor yes. this guy. Sponsor me, <laughs> Half.com. <laughs> the range of my sponsorship and an out of business company a website. That's wonderful. Yes, send me your invisible money, please. So, now comes my favorite part in my video where I randomly select which movie I'm going to be watching, which I've already done. Uh, any ideas what it is? I don't know. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. It's Die Hard. It's the holiday season. So what better the way? Holiday season. Holiday season. So what do you do? In the green dark. You don't forget. Take a piece of color. Just take something. It's one of a color. Here we come down the chimney. With the detonators. No, this movie, of course, <laughs> introduced the entire world to Alan Rickman. Hans uh, Gruber. Hans Gruber. I'm Hans Gruber. Give me the detonators. No, he's uh, one of the greatest villains of all time. This is probably the greatest Christmas movie of all time, too. And if anyone uh, denies that, then they're just lying to themselves, I think. It's not the greatest Christmas movie of all time. It, it really, it really is. No. This was back when Bruce Willis cared. Well, I'm proud of Bruce Willis for caring, but this is not the best Christmas movie. What would you say is the best Christmas movie? Something that's actually about Christmas. It, it, this is about Christmas. It's about family. We will check out Die Hard next time. So, everyone, have you seen Deception? I guarantee you have not. She has. But if you haven't, or if you have and you liked it, please comment below and let us know what you thought about it. And after you're done commenting, please like and subscribe to my channel so you know the next time I post my next movie review. And if any of you have a recommendation of any movie that you want me to watch, Please comment below or go to my Facebook page, my Instagram, my Twitter. Leave your comment there, and if I have access to it, I will watch it on here and review it. And I will give you a shout out here on my channel like I gave you. She's so awkward, and it's so cute. <laughs> so everyone, I will see you next time with my review of Die Hard. So in the meantime, be well, be good to each other, and go watch a movie. Take care, guys. Now is it time? Mm-hmm. <laughs>